Hey, I'm Nancy Cavey. I'm an ERISA and individual disability attorney, and I want to welcome you to Winning Isn't Easy. Before we get started, I've got to give you a legal disclaimer. The Florida Bar tells me that I have to tell you that this podcast is not legal advice. However, I will tell you that nothing will ever stop me from giving you an easy to understand overview of the disability insurance world, the games that disability carriers play, and what you need to know to get the disability benefits you deserve. Ready? Now, I know making the decision to reduce your hours and apply for residual disability benefits or to make the difficult decision to stop work completely and apply for total disability benefits can be tough. I watched my dad make this decision many years and he agonized over it. It took him a couple years to finally decide that he was going to stop work and apply for his benefits. Now, you may think that once you've made that decision and you filed your disability insurance application, that your first disability check is going to be FedEx to you overnight, just within hours of you applying for your benefits. Well, I know your doctor supports your claim and maybe your employer supports your claim, but I will tell you that's not the way it happens. Disability carriers are going to be reviewing your application from three different perspectives. The first is, what are the terms of your policy or plan that are applicable to your claim? Secondly, what's the sufficiency of the medical proof that establishes that you're disabled as that term is defined by your policy or plan? And your occupation, as that term is also defined by your policy or plan, and whether or not you're unable to perform the material and substantial duties of that occupation. In this multi-part series, I have been talking about occupational factors. I've already covered the topics of what your specific occupational duties were prior to the onset of disability, what were the specific uh, mental and physical requirements associated with each and every duty, how long you performed each one of these duties in the course of an average day or week, how the disability carrier goes about verifying your occupational duties, how important the date of onset is as it relates to what your occupation was, the status of your license, the results of those data base and social media searches that the disability carrier and plan are going to do, the results of the criminal background checks that they are going to do, and the results of their unemployment uh, background check that they are, have done on you. A lot of background work, isn't it? But today, I want to switch um, topics a little bit, a little focus difference. What we're going to talk about today is do you have a job to return to? Are there situational factors that impact your motivation to return to work? And these are the kind of stupid questions that the carrier is going to ask you when you apply for benefits. And I want to give you an example of how one disability carrier rejected a claim and was ultimately overturned by a disability carrier. And this disability disabled policyholder had scheduled electroshock treatments and the disability carrier claimed that that was to bolster their claim when the position was eliminated. So we've got some great topics to talk about today. Before we start in, let's take a short break. Welcome back to Winning Isn't Easy. Now, many times disability carriers are going to ask you stupid questions. And one of the stupid questions that I think are there you know, on these forms that you have to fill out is, are there situational factors that impact your motivation to return to work? Okay, so the disability carrier is looking for a reason to dispute and to deny a disability insurance claim. and Stupid questions are just part of this whole process. Now, this question goes to your motivation. I know you've worked hard in your occupation. I know you've taken great pride in what you do and how you help people, and you're probably damn good at your job. But now you're facing physical, cognitive, or psychological challenges that make it difficult, if not impossible, to work. And I think the last thing you need to be questioned about is your motivation. But you're going to get bullcrap questions, and I'm going to go through these questions. 
And the purpose of these questions is to basically create a reason, quote unquote, for you to be unmotivated to go back to work and to remain on the rolls of the disability insurance uh, policy uh, um, gravy train wagon, if you will. So what are some of the questions? Are you taking care of a parent? Why is that important? Well, if you're taking care of a parent and your uh, disabling condition, for example, limits your ability to sit, stand, walk, bend, or uh, lift, and you're taking care of a parent, that kind of activity can be inconsistent with your claimed disability. Do you have a disabled child? Same thing. They're looking for inconsistencies between your reported restrictions and limitations and um, your physical uh, capabilities as it relates to uh, taking care of that disabled child. Now, of course, taking care of a parent or a disabled child is, I believe, you know, our obligation uh, as members of a family. Uh, that doesn't mean that the disability carrier isn't going to uh, conclude that you're really motivated to take care of your family uh, and are looking for an alternative source of income, which is the disability benefits, as opposed to really, really, really being disabled. Another question I'm going to ask is, are you having child care issues? Well, certainly uh, having child care issues can be a problem working for those of us who have or had uh, children. We know what it's like. Uh, but again, I think that's another bullcrap question to try to uh, um, question your motivation for applying for disability benefits. Are you having problems at work? Don't you hate your supervisors or coworkers? Have you been written up? All of those are workplace uh, setting type questions. Uh, and the purpose of this again is to show that you're just claiming disability benefits because you're unhappy at work or they're unhappy with you. And this is just a way for you to sit home and collect these uh, benefits without having to deal with all the hassle of work and the commute and dealing with your unhappy or disgruntled or nasty coworkers or supervisors. Another question is going to be, is your job being eliminated? And I'm going to talk about that in greater detail. Are you afraid uh, you're going to be terminated or laid off? Are you a member of a union that's striking? Again, these are all uh, work-related issues that allegedly can Im uh, you know, result in them questioning your motivation. Because if your job is being eliminated, they're thinking, ah, they're going to be looking for a reason uh, to file a claim. Um, and they're looking at, at that as a way to question your motivation and ultimately to question your doctor about your motivation or your presentation. Is your job being eliminated? Are you afraid of being terminated, laid off? You know, those are the all, all sorts of questions that I think you, again, have to be very careful of answering. If you don't know if your job is being eliminated, say, you know, I'm not aware of my job being eliminated. No, I'm not afraid of being terminated. I'm not afraid of being laid off. I'm a valuable employee who's contributed many years of service to this company. Are you a member of a union that's striking? Well, if you're a member of a union, that's great. Um, but um, you might say that I'm not currently aware of any plans that our union has to strike. The next set of questions I, I really take a lot of offense to. Um, are you separated? Are you getting a divorce? Now, why is that important? Well, because depending on the nature of this divorce or even child care or custody issues, um, they're going to be looking to that, that soon-to-be ex-spouse or the ex-spouse as a source of information, and I put that word in quotes, dirt I really mean, uh, about you and whether or not you're disabled or not. Because your disability potentially is going to be an issue as part of any divorce and custody. Um, you want to obviously establish that you do have a disability that may make you entitled to a greater amount of child support or alimony, but you don't want to be so disabled that you lose custody. So uh, those are particular issues. And when I have those come up in my uh, cases, I'm always talking to the divorce attorney about what's going on and what we're doing and how that might impact both the divorce case and the disability case. Another question is going to be, is your ex-spouse paying child support or alimony and are they current? In my view, that's none of their damn business. Um, will the alimony or child support be increased if you're disabled? Again, you know, none of your damn business. Um, if it is, 
then certainly that will be part of any uh, court finding or, or agreement. But that's, you know, after the fact. Again, if that's going to be happening, you should be working closely not only with your divorce attorney, but with your ERISA disability attorney or IDI attorney to make sure that th this information, if it's discoverable, is not going to adversely impact your LTD claim. And I promise you, they're going to be doing uh, searches on LinkedIn, and they're going to be, as we've talked about before, looking for issues involving cr criminal violations. And that's particularly true if you're a professional. If you're a medical doctor and you're having uh, potential criminal issues associated, for example, with Medicare billing issues um, or malpractice issues, that's always going to be fair game for the uh, disability carrier. Now, you've got a duty to cooperate, and if you're asked those questions, I think it's time for you to stop being asked those questions uh, by calling an experienced ERISA disability attorney. As I said, some of these questions I think are beyond the pale, and I think you need the assistance of an experienced attorney to help uh, navigate through these questions and how to formulate a proper and accurate answer. Got any questions? Send us an email, and I would love to answer the questions associated with these bullshit questions that you get from disability insurance carriers or plan providers. Ready for a break?